بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله كما هو أهله والصلاة والسلام على خير خلقه وأفضل بريته محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين الله صلى على محمد Brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Imam Khomeini is the leader who can be called very simply a unique leader. unique leader through his unique practice and unique leader through his unique achievements. After 25 years from his passing away, not only he remains in the hearts of millions, but also more and more millions of people are realizing the greatness of that unique leader. In Islam, the leadership of the ulama, the religious scholars, is linked with the leadership of the infallible imams means the sincere alim is the continuation of the leadership of the infallible imam. No alim, no Islamic scholar can go in any step against any authentic order from the infallible Imams. In the right school of the Muslim madhab, which is called the following of Ahlul Bayt, we don't believe that the scholar should be appointed by the government like our brothers following other sects when their sheikhs are being appointed like Sheikh Al-Azhar, Mufti, some countries or maybe most of the countries by appointment. No. We don't have such appointment at all because we believe that the real Islamic scholar is above in his authority than the ruler himself. That's why you find that a school of thought in the history of Muslims was being fabricated to make the masses blindly follow the rulers. And you find even justification for this wrong attitude in some books of hadith. Yes, that if the ruler does wrong to you, if the ruler beats you, if the ruler takes your right, keep quiet. Don't object. Because if you object on him, you will be away from the jama'ah, the group, and that is bad according to them. This is the way of Bani Umayyah, who wanted the ulama as servants for the rulers. And after Bani Umayyah also, all the tyrant rulers from Bani Abbas and as and others and Bani Uthman, till today, the followers of that school of thought deal with the ulama as servants. 
They appoint them, they pay them salary, they expect from them absolute obedience. This is one of the main reasons of the downfall of the Muslim Ummah for centuries. That's why before Imam Khomeini, most of the Muslim masses lost hope. Who will be able to change? Injustice everywhere in Muslim countries, un-Islamic acts from the rulers, and people are following the tyrant rulers, and no one is brave enough to say to the wrong that it is wrong. Imam Khomeini came from the background of the ulama who believe in Ahlul Bayt and follow them. All our ulama, right from beginning till today, follow Ahlul Bayt. Imam Khomeini had certain abilities and also chances that the country that he came from, Iran, was majority of followers of Ahlul Bayt who respect the ulama, who follow the ulama, who believe that obeying the marja' of taqlid is obeying the imam and it is obeying the prophet and it is obeying Allah. Imam Khomeini came to say to the tyrant king of his time, Shah of Iran, that wrong is wrong. And he said it openly. And he has, he had paid for it a lot. He was being arrested many times. He suffered from leaving him or sending him out of his country. He went to Najaf and he spent in Najaf number of years. Imam Khomeini did not give up. He remained standing against the wrong till wrong is destroyed. He insisted from his exile resistance against the tyrant wrong ruler Shah he was sending his messages to the people in Iran and ultimately the messages took its effect after some time till Shah had no way but to run away from Iran and he ran away from Iran. And then the victorious religious leader, man of Allah, Imam Khomeini, came back to Iran. Look at his attitude. A man who was arrested in Iran, he was in the prison in Iran for some time. He comes as the strongest and most powerful person in the same country. Look at his attitude. Did he change his attitude? Same humbleness. Same simple, but not simple, simplest way of life. I have witnessed Imam Khomeini personally. Imam Khomeini used to live in Najaf near our house. He used to lead namaz jamaat of Zuhr and Asr in a masjid called Masjid Al-Ansari, which is few meters from our house. So 
when we used to pray Dhuhr and Asr there in the masjid and he was leading the namaz we used to see his attitude he used to pray also Maghrib and Isha at his home his home which is not too far from the masjid in the first floor place of receiving the guest which is called Biruni he used to pray there the Maghrib and Isha with Jama'a his way of life was not simple the simplest and you know a marja like him had lot of money coming from the people but he did not use any money for his personal life only for poor people and serving Islam I saw Imam Khomeini in Tehran in Jamaran in his house I compared between his life in Jamaran when he was the most powerful person in the Islamic Republic of Iran and his life which I saw myself in his house in Najaf it was in Tehran more simple really more simple because he is man of God a man who wants to lead people to Allah I cannot compare him with any other leader in this world among all the heads of the states you cannot compare him at all because he did not use the power which Allah granted him for any personal aim while you see the rulers not the rulers nowadays in many countries the MP the small minister they make a lot of money out of the post that is something usual among the politicians but look at Imam Khomeini and see his attitude which is really unique Imam Khomeini in his personal life was unique I remember once I was telling him I came from India I was in Bombay that time so I came and went to his house in Jamaran and he was listening from me about the situation of the followers of Ahlul Bayt in India he was in Iran but his heart was wherever the Mu'mineen lived I remember very well his reaction with every suffering that the Mu'mineen were suffering from with every pain that any follower of Ahlul Bayt had a man who really wanted to help Islam and Muslims not only in Iran but everywhere not as the enemies claim that he wanted to export the revolution to create trouble in other countries not at all he was wise enough and his wisdom has got hundreds of evidences Imam Khomeini is man of wisdom yes wisdom in his words in his behavior in his calculation wisdom and wisdom and wisdom <clears throat> Imam Khomeini is a lesson for everyone from us especially for those who are supposed to serve religion I wish 
that all the ulama of Muslim sects being Hanafi, Shafi'i, Maliki, Hanbali, Salafi, Barelwi, Sufi, Diubandi, anyone. I hope that they have a look and see the life and the achievements of this great and unique leader. If Muslims in every country have this attitude, then the situation of Muslims will be much, much better. Today, millions of Muslim youth are doubting the role of the religious leaders. Some of them say, why to have a religious men? We don't need. Because they think that the religious scholars should be like the priests. And the priests of non-Islamic faith, like Christianity, are, as you know, don't, not in the position that have effect on people properly. But they are mistaken. They have gone away from the real way of the role of Islamic scholars in Islam. I invite them to look at the life and achievements of Imam Khomeini. To see how one man relying on Allah with tawakkal to Allah can change the whole world. Yes, he did change the whole world. Name of Islam before Imam Khomeini is completely different from name of Islam today. Yes. Imam Khomeini who said whatever we have is from Karbala, he was meaning what he was saying because he followed the same way of Karbala and he could leave an effect on the hearts of millions. The misconception which is stopping many people to understand the message of Imam Khomeini is the prejudgment. There is a prejudgment which says that, oh, Iran, Iran, which came from America. America could not tolerate one country which was for decades a slave to them comes out with new attitude of independence and free will. So they did everything, every evil act to stop the light of Islam in Iran from shining. They instigated their agent Saddam to attack Iran and the Islamic Republic suffered eight years of continuous war, which is something unusual in the recent history. Why? Who was financing it? Who was funding the agents of America in the Arab countries? But what was the result? The victory of Islam. And after that, the propaganda, the propaganda is still going on. Some time will come that this propaganda will fall down. Then more people will understand the greatness of that unique leader. Today, every Muslim from any sect in any country 
needs the symbol of Imam Khomeini to be sure that Islam is the real and the victorious religion. Yes, today Islam is the most fastest spreading religion, yet we have got many Muslim young people who need more support morally to believe and to involve in Islamic activities in their day-to-day -day life, we say Imam Khomeini is a leader who is not from decades or from centuries. I don't speak about Sheikh Saduq before thousand years or Sheikh Tusi. No, I speak about a person whom we have met and we saw him and many people among you and in Najaf and in Iran have seen him personally. A man who lived with us in this age and he could with tawakkal to Allah change the whole world starting from Iran which was a base for satanic acts of the Shah which became now a base of spreading of the message of Islam and other countries where the flame of hope, the light of Islam is in the heart of millions in a lot of countries. I can say almost everywhere because of the great effect of that unique leader. May Allah hasten the reappearance of our Imam and may Allah elevate the status of Imam Khomeini and may Allah keep all of us with the sincere servants of Ahlul Bayt alayhim salam let me as a small act of faithfulness to that great Imam request all of you to recite Surah Al-Fatiha for his holy soul ma'as salawat <laughs>